transitions from hosting to transform really add to the art of hosting practice that is already here in the hub. Uh, I am a art of hosting practitioner for uh, almost eight years, more than eight years now. And uh, so I have a lot of depth and experience already in hosting and, and the art of hosting is a quite serious way of facilitating meaningful conversations and meaningful processes. And I think this adds to it because um, playfulness and celebration should be part of, of community building, of community practice. And I think people actually connect around uh, food, campfires, music and, and, and fun and playfulness. And I think this really adds to have a framework that really uh, touches that base uh, to bring some, um, some light-heartedness also in, in, in the serious business of changing the world. We always assumed that we were very, very good at connecting members. Until after the first session I spoke to a few members and they told me about the number of people they met for the first time and the different experiences they've had, people discovered neighbors they never knew they had, people discovered they actually had similar interests. So this goes so far beyond anything that we even envisaged for where they'll connect. Because when we try and connect startups, we try and connect them on skills. This connects them at a human level. And I think that lasts a lot longer than transactional skill-based uh, associations. Of course, transform will or has already impacted a lot in how we look at facilitation. To the extent that we want our employees and myself trained to be better facilitators. Because we are in the space we are, we do tend to see at least one new startup every month and a few new employees every month. So that attrition ensures that we have to be on our toes and integrate them into the community. Because what we realize is that just having a common space, a common kitchen or a common lounge doesn't bring people together. There has to be a bit more than that and that's what I feel Host to Transform brings to the picture. So Host to Transform, I don't feel is a region specific thing. The reason I say that is what, we'll, what the session focuses on and what the people are focused on are more fundamental human values of connections. We are all social creatures. We want to feel a connection to a fellow human being. And that's what it most importantly emerges. Right? Even the session that we've had, people are from all over the world. There are Europeans, there are Americans, there are Indians. Indians from all over the country. And if all of these people can connect to each other, I, don't, I think it proves that it's not a region-specific phenomenon. I think Host to Transform um, was, so for me, Host to Transform was great because they came in and sort of merged, you know, look, we can play these activities and these games and we can also achieve um, business goals mm -hmm. and uh, through that. Um, yeah. So it, it's not like you're, we're utilizing games, but also for sort of strategizing and achieving um, milestones for companies. Yeah. So it, it sort of grounded it in a way where um, my need for creativity and uh, was being met with the needs of the entrepreneurs to, you know, stay in business yeah. and, and succeed. Um, wow. And Host to Transform, I thought, when we did a workshop with them and brought the entrepreneurs together and began exchange, doing events around figuring out what people's needs were and how everybody could help meet those needs. I feel like I really found my niche. I was like, wow, um, working with entrepreneurs, but also facilitating ways for these entrepreneurs to figure out how to help each other, meet each other's needs, um, and also keep each other uplifted. Uh, I felt like that sort of began, stre began streamlining the kind of communities that I'm interested in building and how I want to build with those communities. I think the principles in Host to Transform could be valuable in any corporation and any organization. The energy that was created, um, especially uh, towards the end of the session, um, uh, created um, an atmosphere where you just share your knowledge, share your uh, social capital with other people. 
So uh, I remember at the end of the session um, we were asked to state a problem or a, a, a challenge we were working on, on, on that day. And I got two or three people that said, oh, I can help you with a, a camera or I can help you build a website. So within 20 minutes after I arrived to work here, I had new contacts and, and that was the let's say serendipity eye-opener I, I got that day and afterwards I was hooked I think for, for, for my company uh, which has to do with helping startups grow um, it's an ideal platform to meet new people uh, uh, like-minded people uh, entrepreneurs so most definitely I'll be coming back uh, more and more uh, to do these things, yeah. To host the transform is exactly the, the idea of getting out of the building, right? Because as I said, when I'm creating a product, sometimes I get focused so much on what I need to get done that I don't take the time to talk to people. And especially when I first launched, this was a big thing for me. I wanted to see what people would think. And for me, especially more importantly, is when I tell people about the product, because I'm a technical guy, I have I, I'm terrible at this, at explaining the product. When I show them the product, then they're like, oh wow, you know, and so you see a much more, you see more than what they would tell you when you just explain it. And that reaction alone helps. So the host to transform session just fits into exactly that. When you get out of, basically we say the building, in this case, we're still in the building, but um, basically get out of whatever I'm doing and, and talk to people and I like that reaction when I show them the product and they're, they're you know they're excited about the potential that it that it offers and so with Host to Transform I met a bunch of people that you know I wouldn't probably go up to and talk to right away but then you do get feedback from them yeah that, that Host to Transform session uh, I met Mark Peter and we got to talking about okay he was looking for an app developer for something that they were working on and I said well I'm working on apps uh, so I can give you some tips or whatever and I told him about my project and so that's when he said oh we also do investment and I kind of like this so let's let's talk and so yeah we had one or two more meetings after that and they all went really well and so now he and his um, yeah his, his company have invested um, some money in the company to help us grow and then take it to the next level. But you are like doing everything on your own. And so thanks to the host of Transform session, I now was able to spread that wider because we, you know, we have um, Mark Peter doing the investment. We, thanks to him, I met some more people that we have in the team. And then I brought, was able to brought in a few more people because now you you know you have more and more people so they they come together um so that's the transformation right there it's you're right in a way that that moment sort of kicked it off because before that i was on my own trying to do a bunch of stuff and i was talking to people but there yeah there was no gravity right like there was one person um and now we're five and i'm probably looking to add some more last two sessions there's actually a couple of the really interesting things uh, Wednesday we did this thing, I don't know, it was all new to me. It was like, I see this improvisation thing, which I already knew a bit, but then you switched it to like asking questions like problems in your career or in your entrepreneurship. And then somebody else uh, gives the answer and the third per person gives a summary. So basically what happens is you shout out your problem and you just get all the answers. So it's like, wow, it's like improvisation, uh, problem solving. Uh, <laughs> There's a really nice structure how you do things, like how you can have like a really playful element and it's like, like there is no sense, like I'm doing this for why, you know, and then you just do it and then you switch it very fast and you get uh, people to give really, to really to get something out of the exercise by it and they, they give the answer themselves. So it's really playful and then you actually turn the playful thing into something very useful where people connect and also uh, they also give value to each other and then after the session we all are together and talking and connecting and it's it's really it's really a lot of value and i really like how you structure it yeah like like when you're really thinking about things how you can go on a more playful way to to solve your problems and also how to structure uh, my life or uh, giving giving value to people or as as a group how you can structure that better that's what i really 
uh, the main thing I want to take away from it. Someone and then people really oh, absolutely not. Oh, so like little things like we had you over uh, for host to transform because we saw the potential of how the community can actually extract from your sessions. And trust me, I have never. Um, like, you know, it was very surprising because I was not very sure of how people are going to respond because now these guys are like the serious techie guys. They love their laptops. The and they, they, yes. <laughs> yeah. And they, they're like, you know, they were like, you know, for an hour, they, they do not want to waste time and they don't like to. Um, so they're very particular and very possessive about their time as well. So I was really concerned. I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm trying this, but I'm, I'm just a little nervous at how they're going to respond because most of them are really closed and shy. And, you know, even though it's a community, um, they just usually just keep it to work. And uh, we wanted the community to grow and we saw the potential that host transform can actually have and the impact we have on the community. Trust me, as, um, as soon as you left, Jessica, there were a few people came back and they were like, Sneha, let's just try to have more of these sessions. And I was like, you guys <laughs> enjoyed so cool. it? Yeah, you guys enjoyed it? And they were like, we loved it. You know, this is just like, it's helping us break the ice and it's helping us understand and it's helping mm -hmm. us contribute to the community rather than just taking from the community. And we want to contribute too. And if we can, we are, you know, he's like, I didn't know, you know, uh, it was as simple as one of the guys came up and told me that, you know, uh, I sit in the next room of that guy for the past, you know, six months. And I just know him by his name. And I didn't know he can develop an app. And I've been looking for a web developer. Web app developer. <laughs> you're sitting next to each other. Yes. And I was like, what? So they were like, yeah, I didn't know he does that. Now I know it. And I'm like, awesome. We should then go and talk to him and get that. <laughs> it's more about how you actually led the workshop it was it, like like you said it was never in the face it was never forceful it didn't like you know push you to the uncomfortable zone where you were like a little eerie and you were like oh my god why am I here I, I didn't sense that from anybody all throughout the session or even post session they were just so comfortable like you know they were just so comfortable and I like wow they can become comfortable with each other and you know nobody's pushing them to do it so it was it was a lovely experience it was yeah. a great experience and it uh I think it did open a lot of doors for communications um you know in a way you know people started talking to each other people started addressing each other people started you know actually looking to each other for help and you know they would come up and they would contribute themselves and they would be like oh Snee you know what I I, uh, I know SEO very well do you want me to conduct a session and I'm like yeah I saw you like a year back from you and it's, like, it's taken you eight months to come up and tell me but you know I'm, I'm glad that that they came that they it came did, up and told me that so it's yeah. it's great you know it's the whole idea of um them trying to take the ownership and trying to take the step towards contributing to the community or to each other you know it's the communication has become more fluid and yeah. it, it just it's it flows it, it happens so it's great mm -hmm. and uh, post your session everybody was so energetic that the whole day was so bubbly and so positive <laughs> like I could see people like talking and you know sh wanting to share ideas and you know like you know wanting to make conversations even debates for that matter and they were just like they wanted to look they were looking forward to the day the, the whole transformation is what when, when, when I say transformation it's just you know from a day to day when I'm trying to compare of how you know your uh, workshop had an impact in them all throughout the day and what is what was the next session like it's for me it, that was the best transformation that I could see is that the community started you know they just needed an icebreaker mm -hmm. and your session served the purpose yeah. so it was, it was yeah. gorgeous yeah, yeah.
I think that the Fitness for the Mind and Network, the whole concept is, uh, I think it's really cool. I mean, we, we need more of it uh, on a global scale. I mean, I've, I've had the, 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 the opportunity to, to, to live and work in, you know, Europe, South America, um, as well as um, other continents, South Africa as well. And um, I don't see enough of people connecting, even at events where it's meant to be a co-working space and, you know, you're going to go meet. No one, no one does it. Like, you kind of just sit and you're like, hi, hi. And it doesn't really go beyond that, like, let alone making the stretch. And unless you're of that kind of mindset, which is only limited to a very few select people that will go up to a stranger, then it needs to be facilitated. And that was one of the great things I saw about um, the, the, the fitness of the, the mind, um, the, the networking event that we just had, because, yeah, literally, I, I got to meet someone, a guy that was from, from Brazil. Uh, he's trying to get citizenship in Italy, and he's here to do graphic design. He has an interesting story. I met someone else who traveled through India and was a freelance journalist. And, you know, I need some help with some content writing that I'm doing. And and the graphic designer could perhaps, you know, maybe I could help him get settled because I, I used to live in Italy. Um, so all of these things would never happen if it wasn't for a simple thing like a meeting like that. So I definitely see one more of this to happen kind of across rooms because even the so-called kind of working spaces aren't, aren't enough. You need a push. And this for me is that. I've got a different account that I used to use for work. It's got five and a half thousand friends. How many conversations do I have with these people on a regular basis? Oh my God, it's like less than, I mean, good friends, less than five. People I speak to, maybe 25. So yes, you need the face-to-face -face contact. And the interesting thing for me, um, being a digital nomad, is that sometimes I forget that. I spend a lot of time kind of in, in isolation, quote unquote, because I'm pursuing other interests. And today kind of made me realize that, oh wow, it's cool to just kind of meet people and be like, oh hey, hey man, or hey, what's up? And just kind of talk. And the kind of connections you build far outweigh friending someone just on Facebook or liking a post or connecting them or sending a connection request on LinkedIn, because then it's very much about the, what is the best strategy to approach you and what have you done? The, and sometimes all it takes is a face-to-face -face meeting, being like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm Deepak. Or, hey. So that, that that's really outweighs the, the value of, as, as you said, just kind of friending someone on Facebook. One of the greatest un, unspoken parts about entrepreneurship is the loneliness that's, that's involved when you go and decide to beat your own path and that you're on a track, but you're on a track that's kind of in a, you work in silos, you know, you work alone a lot of the time and you grab bits of information here and there, but you're laying the tracks that's going to be kind of the railway that's for your own life. And this is stressful. I mean, we, we spend all this time in education and then with the workplace being told what to do. So it's so nice to, and stress relieving, to be able to meet people that are on that same journey as you. And it isn't just in a digital format. It's like, oh, hey, you know. And uh, that's something that, um, you know, I feel, for example, that I, I miss a little bit. Like there's things to be said about a kind of office environment, but where you have people that can share your struggle and, you know, um, I don't know, my mum always was like, you know, problem sh a problem shared is a problem halved. And it's funny when you look back and you think, oh, wow. So she wasn't lying then, but it really is helpful to just talk to people about, you know, this is my stuff. Can you help me with my stuff? Because everyone has their stuff. It's just a case of finding out what it is. So, yeah, it was it was really great and stress relieving to be able to, to meet people face to face and just talk about our own problems.